Apple's taken over more and more of the design elements inside the iPhone, not just on the outside. Started with Apple Silicon, of course, to get the most amount of performance per watt so you could have great battery life and a snappy, fluid user interface until liquid glass comes out. But more recently, with the development of the iPhone 16e, we saw Apple try to design their own cellular modems, again, to pursue better battery life because they likely started realizing that these Qualcomm modems they've been using for years are pretty much the biggest drain on your phone's battery. So it's gonna take a few years, but I'm sure eventually all iPhones will have in-house designed C chips, but what's next for Apple? Is it another chip or another sensor that might make the iPhone as competitive as possible? Let's begin. So this leak comes from a Weibo account, but it's also backed up by some official Apple patents, and essentially the leaker over on Weibo is saying that Apple is further along in this development than just filing patents. Of course, you've watched this channel for a while, you know that Apple files patents for things all the time that never actually turn into anything. Apple Car, oh my god, there were so many patents for it, and of course never turned into anything, but this one is of course smartphone related, or at least smartphone adjacent, which is why it's probably more likely to be legit, but it suggests that Apple is looking at designing their own image sensors for the cameras on the iPhone, which in case you didn't know, yeah, they're currently using Sony sensors on pretty much all iPhone cameras. Funny enough, that's also what other Android phones are doing these days, which is kind of funny because we act like, oh, Apple designed this phone and then Samsung designed this phone and Google did this phone and yet they're all kind of buying a lot of the same parts from the same suppliers. So in the end of the day, that's why the software really is kind of the big differentiator between different brands because it's all about how your algorithms and how you design to interpret those images that come in from these third-party sensors. But now it looks like Apple might not be completely satisfied with the sensor quality they're getting out of Sony. And of course, I don't think Apple would switch to their own in-house design sensor unless they truly felt like their sensor could do something substantially better. And according to this report and the patents, it all comes down to making better better use of the pixels available, so it's not so much this endless marketing game of how many megapixels can we cram in there, let's have a 12k image, let's have a 20k image with like 200 megapixels, no, that's not really the point, which I think is wise of Apple to pursue if this ends up being correct. What is wise of them though, is to look at ways of dramatically increasing the dynamic range of our smartphone sensors. This actually already has come a long way, in my opinion, just if you watch a video from an iPhone 10, great phone and you know the display that we have on that kind of paved the way for the next decade of smartphone displays we still kind of use our phones with gestures now because of that original iPhone 10 revolution but if you go back and watch a video from an iPhone 10 it's like oh dynamic range and image stabilization in particular has come a long long way so much less dynamic range back then compared to now and it looks like Apple wants to continue to take that to the next level which gets me kind of excited as a videographer I'm recording stuff all the time on my iPhone, and I often do run into times where people are constantly having to tap on the display like, no, lower the exposure, this is too bright, but it's blocking out this subject. Classic example, of course, is when you're like inside taking a picture with a window in the background. It's like you either have to have the lighting optimized for the subject and have the background blown out, or you can have the lighting optimized for the background and your subject is way too dark to see. Of course, the human eye doesn't really have this same problem because we have many, many stops of dynamic range, which is just a term for we can see and interpret many different lighting environments without having the backgrounds or our subjects get blown out. And it sounds like Apple developing their own image sensor wants to make sure that the pixels that are there probably don't have to be much more than we already have, 48 or 50 megapixels, something like that. But finding a way for them to capture more light that would be closer to that of the human eye's performance with dynamic range so you don't have this issue of having to tap on the subject or tap on the background and adjust the exposure, which I already feel like has gotten really good on modern iPhones, but still, yes, I do run into situations where I have to adjust it or it's just too bright in the background and we have to reorient ourselves and take a picture in a different place, which is a weird, like, hurdle to jump over for smartphone photography because most of the time it's our eyes that are really the critic to figure out is this a situation that I want to take a picture or video of. If you see something that looks really pretty, 
that's what makes you want to pull out the phone like I want to remember this moment but then when the phone ends up ruining that moment because it's like oh it doesn't look right the lighting's bad it turns what could have been a beautiful moment into a oh man my camera sucks and as the smartphone matures year over year and we're all noticing that we can't really get displays that much better we can only slim down bezels so much we can only get them so bright you know we're coming up on the limits of what actual benefits are gained from having more and more nits baked into our display or you know just brightness levels like 2500 nits 3000 nits once you start getting in that realm it's like okay even in direct sunlight i can see the screen just fine and of course apple seems to have tackled everything they can when it comes to battery efficiency by revolutionizing how smartphone chips are designed with efficiency cores and performance cores and of course the next bottleneck was cellular modems consuming the most power on your phone i knew that for a fact once i put my iphone in airplane mode on a trip a while back and i was still using like public wi-fi networks i still had internet access and all that but my battery life straight up felt like it doubled just because i wasn't having to use cellular anymore so apple's like okay let's bring that in-house find a way to make these little modems way more energy efficient so once you've boosted battery life as much as you can with your own in-house silicon what's next do you double down on how great the display is eh, i feel like they're getting pretty bright already but it seems like apple might be doubling down on how do we make our cameras as great as possible because that's kind of what these devices are turning more and more into. It's funny we still call them phones because that's kind of the last feature we use them for. We're using them for so many other things than actual calls now, but the camera, I think Apple is probably right in betting that that's going to be the main differentiator in the future. Why someone goes with an iPhone or over a Pixel or over a Galaxy and they want to stay as competitive as possible, which I'm just excited that there's time and money going into hardware advancements because as you guys know I kind of get sick with all of the hype around AI and I'm not even really that hyped about liquid glass I just feel like it's going to be a big strain on the GPU in our phones and it's probably going to drain our battery lives to have to render all these additional refractions and blurs and have to figure out the best way to contrast the background because it's harder to see our text now I don't know I'm not that excited for liquid glass I'm not that excited for Apple intelligence features but it would be exciting to get some substantially better dynamic range in the future and see how Apple could design that custom for the iPhone and not be so dependent on Sony in the future. How do you guys feel about this rumor? What types of features with your smartphone do you think need to be prioritized outside of the obvious stuff, which is just like better battery life and brighter displays, faster chips, that kind of thing? What focus does Apple need to prioritize? Feel free to let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And thank you to everybody supporting this channel directly. Seriously, helps us out a ton, as does just watching these videos. So thanks again. This is your Apple Shape here, and I will see you all in the next one.